Andy Davis. We have not used tanks or any artillery fire. The extraordinary claims of the Syrian foreign minister today. But his denial came as the United Nations inquiry concluded that state security forces had indeed committed crimes against humanity in its suppression of political opponents. In the capital of Damascus, thousands turned out for a pro-government rally condemning the sanctions imposed by the Arab League. Our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Miller is one of the few Western journalists in Damascus where he's reporting under Syrian government restrictions. Deaf to the growing clamour of outrage abroad, seemingly blind to the scale of revolt, the beleaguered regime of Bashar al-Assad today organised a festival of big brotherly love in downtown Damascus. Power is worth nothing when a ruler kills his own people, the Qatari Prime Minister said last night, after 19 of the Arab League's 22 members voted to slap sanctions on Syria, one of the League's founding members. If there are Syrians who appreciate this gesture, they were not down here today. We're here to protest against the stupid decision of the Arab League, this woman said, and to show our support for Bashar al-Assad. Not everybody in Syria agrees with you. Yeah, of course. All agree with me about 90%. Let's say 90% want the President al-Assad. But the problem is that we have gangsters. Gangsters by American, by some uh, our, of our enemies. We have some gangsters killing our security men and our army, and we don't accept this. Then everyone stops to pledge allegiance to the Commander-in-Chief. For such a softly spoken president, Bashar al-Assad certainly has a very big presence. But behind this cult of personality lies a monolithic regime which, for all the outpouring of presidential love and for all the indignation expressed over Arab League sanctions, this regime has been deeply wounded and finds itself in a very difficult place indeed. <laughs> Yet at a news conference, Syria's foreign minister shrugged it all off. The Arab League had made a dangerous move, he said. Shame on them. He apologized for showing a very gory video set to dramatic music of what he claimed were the crimes of armed gangs who killed civilians and soldiers. Jonathan Miller from Channel 4 News in the UK. If I might... When I asked if the regime might not have averted these sanctions by pulling tanks out of cities, he lambasted irregularities in the Arab League's procedures. So I followed up. But with respect, sir, the tanks are still in Syrian cities. This isn't true at all. Since the beginning of the events nine months ago, no tank fire has been used, no artillery, no warplanes. The only weapons used were personal firearms. Now there are order protection units located in Syrian cities, not the Syrian army. These are pictures of these so-called protection units operating yesterday, reportedly in Homs. They're firing down a residential side street. It's not clear what they're trying to protect. Opposition groups claim tanks have repeatedly fired on civilian areas. This recent footage from Homs. It's been a rough day for Damascus. The EU also beefed up its sanctions, and a UN commission tonight condemned the Syrian army for committing crimes against humanity. Twice today, ordinary people sidled up to me to tell me they hated the al-Assad regime. But are its days numbered? Not yet. Jonathan Miller, Channel 4 News, Damascus.